Hello neighbors and welcome to The Pulse, Lake Wildwood's news and information program. I'm Paul Town and this is the news for the week starting Friday, May 8th. A message from our general manager, Brian Cox. Greetings Lake Wildwood. The assessment and amenity mailing was mailed May 1 to all lot owners. If you haven't received yours yet, please allow a few more days for it to reach you via the USPS mail. Each year we endeavor to improve the assessment and amenity process, and this year we are offering online amenity registration and processing. We have, we have also made the boat renewal and storage space renewal process simpler for the member and staff by billing those directly to the members. All amenity and boat forms are online and accessible from the member's home page of the website. Since this is a new process for all of us, we appreciate you, your patience. If you have inquiries, you may em email info at lwwa.org and one of our staff members will get back to you promptly. In board news, the business meeting will be May 13th at 1.30. This will be a virtual meeting and will be available on the Pulse's YouTube channel. A link will also be posted to the members page at lwwa.org. The Board of Directors has scheduled an election of two directors to fill vacancies that will occur on July 25th. Per Lake Wildwood election rules, as allowed by Civil Code Section 5105, a candidate must have owned property in Lake Wildwood Association for at least one year as of May 21st. Candidates for the Board of Directors shall file an application form with the Administration Office, attention Donna Brazil, between the period of May 1 and May 21st at 5 p.m. The application should be submitted to info at lwwa.org. Filing forms shall include candidates' printed name, signature, lot number, residence address, phone number, and email address. A statement of qualification and reason for a candidacy shall also be included. This statement shall be no more than 200 words. Remember that in many instances, your statement will be the only information voters will have about you. Applicants should consider asking a spouse or friend to review it for spelling, grammar, and content prior to submission. Candidate statements will be published as submitted. You will find the application at lwwa.org. Defensible space advisory visits are up and running again. This is a good time to schedule a visit and get some advice on what you can do to increase your defensible space. Remember, these are only advisory visits. The association will not be having the green waste drop off for the remainder of the season due to the COVID-19 guidelines. Fortunately, the Fire Safe Council of Nevada County has received funding to hold green waste drops in three locations. One of the locations will be at the Penn Valley Rodeo Grounds. The drop-off will start May 17th and run Sunday through Tuesdays until June 27th. The hours of operations will be from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Please refer to the Fire Safe Council's website, ruefiresafe.com, for further er information or to schedule a defensible space visit. There's also a great need for volunteers. Thank you for your support. Burn day permits are now required from the fire department. To obtain a residential burn permit, the processes go to the county website, burnpermitfireca.gov, and fill out the form, print it, and watch a three minute video. The phone number to call in order to check for a burn day is 274-7928. Listen for status in our area. Remember that not all days are burn days. Only those burn days listed on the message are approved for burning. It's extremely important to follow the proper rules and safety measures when burning. Burn permits are not available from the EMO office. It's assessment time. If you'd like to move to quarterly payments, please complete the quarterly installment plan contract and return it to the administration office 
no later than June 1. The contract can be mailed to Audrey Kiger at Audrey K at LWWA.org, mailed to 11255 Cottontail Way, Penn Valley, or faxed to 432-2044. All many payments are now online. Golf, golf carts, tennis, and pickleball. You will find the link on the members page at LWWA.org. Annual boat renewals will be billed separately. Please follow the instructions on the statement. Boat decals will be mailed to you. Please allow two weeks processing time. It's time to break out your weed eater. By rules, grasses should be no taller than four inches. I find I usually need to do my yard at least twice before the June 15th deadline to stay within the rules. The membership will vote to adopt new governing documents later this year. The Board of Directors has authorized the posting of proposed amended bylaws and declarations on our website as proposed Third Amendment bylaws and declarations of CCNRs. The documents are posted for you to review. Why you care about this? The association will be soliciting your affirmative vote sometime later this year. In order to replace our current documents, the community must obtain an affirmative vote of a majority of all members. In the past, 2007, we failed to achieve the required quorum of votes. So the association had to petition the court to certify the documents. We want to avoid the cost of going back to court this time. Our golf news comes from Jim Quintel, chair of the golf committee. I think you have noticed the course in the best condition you have ever seen. Of course, you may say because no one's been playing, and that's true. And you can help keep it that way. Please remember to observe the 90 degree cart rule, replace or fill all your divots, and repair all your ball marks on the greens. The long overdue irrigation system is well on its way and will be infringing on one hole of play on any given day. Please stay clear of the equipment and workers and let them do their jobs efficiently. I would like to also encourage our COVID-19 walkers consider taking up the game and keep enjoying the beauty of our course. There will be group lessons available soon from one of our PGA professionals. We have even installed a short course to cater to beginners, juniors, or anyone just looking to play a fun easier version of golf. Good news! Meadow Park Bocce Club play has resumed weekly. Games are on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 9 a.m., 10 a.m., and evenings at 6 p.m. Drop-in players are welcome. First come, first serve. Or sign up beforehand on the sign-up sheet posted at the club shed. Two-person team formats due to mandated crowd guidelines Social distancing and face mask rules apply. For more information, call Gary at 432-9059. Our security update comes from our security manager, Pete Newell. Well, greetings once again. Pete Newell, your security manager at Lake Wildwood. We're going to start off today with a story of an incident that we handled about a week ago. Every parent's worst nightmare. Fortunately, it came out okay. On uh, Waxwing, there was a grandmother taking care of uh, three small children uh, during the day. The kids were out playing out front in the yard, and she was right there on them. She was on a front deck, had them in view, thought everything was fine. The kids started to run around the back of the house, so she went through the house out to the back deck to keep, keep track of them. And within just a few moments of that, she realized that the three-year-old granddaughter was missing and she was truly missing. She was gone out of the yard and nobody could find her. The grandma called security right away and obviously on a call like that we were there immediately. We then called the sheriff in case we needed to do some real search and rescue work. Um, our officer checked in with the grandmother of course, got the description, uh, figured out from the neighborhood the wooded area nearby and what might have happened and started a search right then and there. 
Uh, fortunately, about 15 minutes after the last sighting of the girl, our security officer located her quite a ways from home in a wooded area, uh, but safe and sound, a little bit frightened, um, and brought her back home to a very grateful grandma. One of those situations where, you know, the grandma really didn't do anything wrong. It just shows you how fast things can happen. You blink an eye and things, things can go wrong. So we're very, very grateful for this outcome. Uh, our next story is uh, kind of exciting for Lake Wildwood. A Lake Forest resident was working in his yard uh, last Friday afternoon, just doing some gardening, moving some earth around, and he uncovered what certainly appeared to be a military-style hand grenade right there in, in the ground. It looks like it had been there a while. It had a lot of rust on it and things like that, and nobody knew whether it was a souvenir or a live grenade. So he again called security right away. We involved the sheriff's office. They responded in force. Uh, we didn't have to do too much of an evacuation because the house, the, the location of this backed onto uh, Black Forest Road, which is outside the community and is all farmland anyhow. So it was not really in a bad spot at all. The sheriff called the uh, Beale Air Force Base and they sent uh, ordnance disposal professionals out. Uh, and they were able to safely remove the item and took it away with them. The only sad part of this story is we never got the word whether or not it was real or not, but we're just happy that it was all safe. Our last comment here, our last comment here is that uh, with summer coming and people more in the parks more, we are seeing quite a few problems with dogs in the park. Um, we had relaxed the rules for a little while in the golf course and I think people might have gotten the wrong idea because we're getting a lot of people taking their dogs to our regular parks. Unfortunately, all dogs are prohibited from all parks at all, period. The only exception are our trained, certified, and bandana-wearing goose dogs. So you may see a dog in the park and security not taking care of it, but for yourself, you cannot have dogs in the park. That's all for this week. We will talk to you again soon. Thank you. I'd like to thank Pete and his officers for doing their best to keep our community safe and secure. Well, that's the news for this week. I want to thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the Pulse YouTube channel, home of your virtual board of directors meetings. And until next time, stay healthy and happy.